right, delighted to have Ian Wilson here. Ian is the Head of Learning Development uh, the Council of Europe, and Damien Boyer, who is from Good Habits, and they'll be speaking together. Um, Ian is the Head of the Learning Development Unit at the Council of Europe, and in, uh, which is an international organization based in Strasbourg, France. He is responsible for the learning program for staff members. He's originally from New Zealand, has a master's in organizational psychology, and is a chartered psychologist with uh, British Psychological Society. Uh, he's previously worked as a human resources consultant and trainer in the public and private sector in New Zealand, Europe, and the Middle East. So he's worked in a lot of different places, had a lot of experience to share. So we have Ian from the uh, Council of Europe, and we have Damien from Good Habits. We're pleased to welcome both of them. And they're going to talk about the Council of Europe moving from a push to a pull learning culture with good habits. So please welcome Ian and Damien. Thank you. Thank you, David. I'd forgotten I'd given all of that information. <laughs> I didn't realize uh, I had to get such a good introduction. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about our journey uh, from a push to a pull culture. And good habits has been a real key part of that journey. Not the only part, but a, a very key part. Um, the journey is, is by no means over. Um, in some ways, we've only just started this journey. Um, first, before I get into that part of it, though, I'll give you a little bit of background and context uh, around the Council of Europe and, and some of the challenges we're facing. So the Council of Europe, if you haven't heard of us before, we get confused very frequently with the European Union, the European Council, the, the Parliament. Um, we're a separate organization, and as you can see from the map, we cover a lot more of the continent than the European Union. So we have 46 member states. Two months ago, it was 47 member states, but one member state has been ejected. Um, so that's Russia um, for invading another member state, completely against our values. Uh, our main mission is promoting human rights, democracy, and the rule of law throughout the European continent and also our neighboring countries. More concretely, what does that mean? Uh, it means we try work in, in a whole range of different areas um, from around uh, uh, rights for migrants, uh, ter uh, fight against terrorism, money laundering, match fixing, discrimination, um, minority rights. Uh, so a whole raft of different things that we, that we work on and promote in our different member states. Um, as was mentioned in the introduction, uh, we're based, uh, headquarters is based in Strasbourg. We have 2,500 colleagues, um, but we also have field offices. The majority are based in Strasbourg, but we have around um, 18 field offices plus liaison offices, um, which is a lot smaller, um, but they are spread out all through, through our member states. And we have two official languages, English and French. So, um, a little bit of context around, uh, around this project. Um, in 2019, we released a new HR strategy, a people strategy, and that was part of a larger administrative reform. So, our organization was created in 1949, and in some ways, it feels like we haven't evolved much in some areas. Um, and so, the, the administrative reform is very much around modernizing, uh, bringing, pulling us uh, up into the 21st century, um, and, and the learning and development part as well. Um, alongside all of this, um, we have our, our member states who are putting a lot of pressure on us and tightening the screws in terms of budget. Um, so the budget has been shrinking, and they're demanding we do more. Um, and then, of course, COVID came along. That provided an extra challenge, and everybody's aware of that and the challenges that that brought. But in some ways, it was a catalyst for this transformation um, in terms of moving to more uh, digital solutions. So it did actually help us in a lot of ways. Um, so I put L&D challenges. In some ways, these are not challenges. They're problems that we are facing. We, as we ha I mentioned the shrinking budget. But at the same time, our staff numbers are actually growing. So we're having to do more. We have to train those new staff people. We're doing more projects. Um, but we have less, a smaller budget. Um, part of the reform has also been strengthening our field presence. So the, the um, number of staff members in the field offices has doubled in the last few years. So we have a lot more people spread out um, geographically. And uh, I mentioned that, that our organization is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bureaucracy. It's a large bureaucracy. Um, uh, hierarchical, top-down, um, traditional organization that some of you may be familiar with. And along with that comes this traditional learning culture, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. 
Um, and then in the broader context, which is the case everywhere, we have all these changes going on. So we had COVID, which has led to a lot higher rate of uh, teleworking, uh, as well as all the technology trends. The way we consume content is tra uh, changing. Uh, we're streaming content, on-demand content. Um, everything's digitalized. And then we have a new workforce coming in, the, the new generation coming in, uh, digital natives, and they're uh, expecting content to be available online and uh, on demand. So these are all the problems we are facing at the same time. Since then, we've started putting in place a, a number of initiatives. Um, uh, we've worked uh, on training up staff. Uh, so we've, we've put in place a, a coaching program so where we've trained up internal staff to become coaches, to coach other colleagues. So that's our GROW coaching program. We've also trained up staff to become facilitators, to run collective intelligence workshops with our colleagues uh, and help teams uh, to develop their own solutions. So that's the facilitators network. Um, and we have also now a, a, a large network of internal trainers who, uh, to, who help uh, the learning process. But on top of this, we really needed to get digital content, online content. And so we looked um, at off-the-shelf uh, solutions for that just so that we could have something um, immediately available. And Good Habits, I mentioned Good Habits was a key part of that. So, um, I mentioned our old learning culture. A few years ago, uh, pretty much all of our training was classroom-based training, very traditional, classic classroom-based training, um, which, as you know, it, it, it's periodic, it, it's time-consuming, um, the most common complaint from, you know, when you try to get people to go on training is, I don't have time, uh, it doesn't fit, you know, I've got other priorities. Um, so the numbers are obviously lower, and it's very expensive as well. And we can't train on everything, so we have to prioritize the topics. So essentially, this is a top-down approach. We're the ones deciding what the priorities are. I mean, we do needs analysis, but at the end of the day, it's us who decides, and we're deciding when the training takes place, etc. And what we really wanted to do was to move towards, um, so I call that, that old traditional approach, I call a push approach because we're pushing uh, content, we're pushing um, uh, our training and our, our, our themes onto the staff members and asking them to adapt to, our, uh, to what we impose. And I can't remember when it was, I, I read an article where they mentioned this push versus pull uh, culture. And for some reason, a light went on in my head and it immediately made sense to me um, because I realized what we were doing is um, we were talking a lot about have, having to develop a continuous learning culture, uh, that people should be taking responsibility for their own learning and doing more. But actually, we weren't changing what we were doing with them and we weren't changing what we were offering. Um, and that's why this made sense. And I realized we had to develop um, an offer which uh, spoke to people, uh, an offer which suited their needs, something which was available, something which was attractive to pull people in, uh, that makes people want to come and do learning. Uh, you know, I always wonder why we shouldn't have to uh, fight so hard to get people to come on training courses. Why don't they want to come? Uh, and th this was where this pull thing came from. Yeah, we need to make something that's like a magnet that draws them in and makes them want to stay or makes them want to come back. Uh, so the, the blended learning, the continuous learning, um, the things which are available all the time when it suits people, so it's convenient, it's easy to access at any time, and everybody can access. These were key things that uh, we really needed to, to look at, and also to cover a, a vast range of topics uh, that catered to the different needs because we have uh, you know, we have such a broad population of all kinds of uh, different professions that work for us. So, uh, this is where good habits came into the picture. Um, we, we looked around and uh, when, when I discovered good habits, uh, for me it was a really good fit for what we were looking for. Um, if, if you haven't seen some of the good habits courses, um, what immediately struck me compared to some of the other things I'd seen uh, is that they're really well designed um, in terms of the structure, in terms of the looks, they're sexy, uh, it, it's very attractive, and it makes you want to come back again. And that, for me, was the key. 
it made me want to go back and do it again, which is not always the case with a lot of learning content out there. On top of that, uh, within each of the modules, there's a lot of variety uh, in terms of the tasks that you're doing. Um, so you've got a magazine and you've got a video you can watch. It's not just any old video, it's, it's really well done. Um, they're, they're presented a bit like you're watching uh, you know, a, a news channel or a, a TV channel at home. Um, you've got quizzes, you've got case studies, so a lot of varied content, but very well structured and organized throughout. I mentioned the attractiveness, which might seem superficial, but I think it's really important to have stuff that can draw people in. And, um, and this is a big, big thing with good habits. They make products which are easy to, to sell to your colleagues. On top of that, um, the support aspect was very important. So I'm joined here with, with Damien, who is our, our coach. Uh, they call them coaches in good habits. And we do a lot of work with the coaches on an ongoing basis. So it's not just a case of uh, implementing the tool and then, okay, I've, up to you now. Um, they help us with uh, implementing this uh, uh, on an ongoing basis and getting our users using uh, the to tools and products with coaching sessions, um, workouts, uh, things like that. And also there's inbuilt in tools in the platform to do your own marketing. Uh, so there's this thing called Promo Studio where you can create nice uh, newsletters, nice product uh, um, uh, well, graphics to put into your um, emails or to put up on the wall. Um, I mentioned that it's an ongoing journey. We, we don't, um, well, there's a lot of things that are missing in, in, in this journey and one of them is a, a good LMS that's really going to bring everything together and tie things together. So um, the LMS platform that Good Habits offered was really essential to us. We needed a platform that people could easily use and go on and find what they wanted to find. And, um, and so that was a key point. The variety of topics I've mentioned. Um, particular to us though, we have two official languages. We really needed um, content that was available in both English and French. And content that was adapted to the European context. So we're a U European organization. And when you look at American content uh, or from elsewhere, it, it just doesn't fit with our culture um, and, and with the language we speak and things like that. So this European context, the fact that Good Habits is based in Europe, the content's developed here in Europe by Europeans, and it's contextualized, it's localized to each country, was really important, and it speaks to people. So... Um, we launched Good Habits uh, right in the middle of the pandemic, um, so that we had the first lockdown, and, uh, and then we went to launch Good Habits. Just check the time. Um, because of the pandemic, we, we couldn't really do some of the fun ideas that we'd had, like uh, we wanted to uh, give out fruit at the cafeteria, for example, with some Good Habits stickers on them. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good habit to eat fruit, but um, we couldn't do any of that. So in the end, we had to just do a... a online communica uh, communication campaign. Um, we ran a news item on the intranet. We, ha we developed a little website to tell me more, uh, people more about it. We ran information meetings um, with our HR correspondents and also with new staff, with, uh, uh, with managers. Um, we ran workout sessions with our uh, a Goods Habits coach. And now we have ongoing newsletters as well. So we push out newsletters on a regular basis. And we're starting to integrate the training courses into uh, training paths. So we're launching new management training paths. And within those training paths, uh, we'll have the e-learning content, um, which, which will relate to the different topics and so on. Damien, I don't know if you want to add anything to some of, uh, some of the actions that we, uh, we put in place to launch Good Habits. Yeah, no, thanks a lot. I think you are just the, the best promoter for Good Habits, so I will let you continue. Thanks okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing I, I didn't mention, we, we, we wanted to make it really easy for our colleagues to access it, so we, had, um, we put in place an SSO, a single sign-on, so people don't have to worry about um, logins, about passwords and things like that. They just need to click and they're directly into the, into the platform. And that was really important um, in terms of uh, removing the barriers to, to using it. So, um, in terms of numbers, uh, we have now over 1,700 users. So, if you remember, we have 2,500 staff members. That's, that's around two-thirds of our, our staff have actually started using Good Habits. Um, over uh, 2,400 hours of study. And um, 
the good stand I haven't mentioned, that's another nice little feature of good habits. It allows people to, it's like a personality, interest, and skills questionnaire. So you can measure your own interests, you can measure your own um, skills through this questionnaire, and it takes into account your, uh, your own style, your learning style as well, and, and produces a report. And on the basis of the report, it also recommends training for you. And so it's a really good um, way of getting people to uh, engage with the, with the learning process. And you know, that instead of having to go through the whole catalog, they can, um, they can do this and it prioritizes their learning for them. I forgot to mention, by the way, in terms of the, uh, the variety of topics, Good Habits has a, a good catalog. For me, it covered all our needs. Uh, um, 150 courses in English now, a little bit less in French. Um, it's not an extensively massive catalog when you look at just the numbers, but for me, that was actually a good thing. Um, f sometimes, I, I don't know, I get paralysis by choice. If I'm bombarded or if I have too much choice, uh, it, it's just too difficult. And we see now a lot of these products are, um, are actually designed to help users with making choices because it's simply too much out there. The Good Habits catalog was a manageable number, so uh, that was actually a real plus for, for me. Some of our, our top courses, um, time management is the number one course, followed by two Excel courses, and um, l'entraînement cérébral, uh, so cerebral training. I don't know what that says about our, uh, our colleagues, um, but apparently so that, that's pretty typical of, uh, of the, uh, the trend in good habits as well with the Excel and, um, and some of those top courses. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Uh, when we put this in place, um, it was quite new uh, for our organization. So I mentioned the traditional learning culture. In the past, um, when people wanted to do a training course, uh, they had to go through a workflow and the, work, the, the request would go to the manager. The manager has to validate the request and then it comes back to us, they get enrolled. Um, and, and obviously limited places, not everyone can go on every course, etc., etc. So one of the first things that people would come up to me and say is, um, you know, can anybody access this? Oh, wow. And, and they were really thanking us for putting this in place and giving full access to all the topics. Um, and then after that, some of this other feedback we see here and some of the things I've mentioned, that, that just the fact that people can do it in their own time when they have a moment. They can do it on their phone. Um, they can do it while they're traveling. They just need internet access. Um, and there are no limits, so you have access to the whole catalog, all subjects. Um, that was a real plus for people. And a lot of people spoke about the fact that the, the topics um, on there relate to their personal lives as well. It's not just professional, but it's about developing as a, as a person. And that's really important for us too in, in terms of well-being. Uh, we want our staff to be, um, to be happy at work. And to be happy at work, you have to also be happy in your personal life as well. So um, that was important. So um, I'm going to stop there, unless uh, Damien, uh, any, any comments, anything else? Um. Uh, thanks a lot once again, uh, Jan, for, uh, for, for, for all those uh, precious information that you are given to, giving to, uh, to everybody. Uh, we, are, we are developing really fast at Good Habits, and it's uh, also uh, thanks to all the behavior of our dear customers. Uh, today, Good Habits has uh, new offi have, uh, offices in 14 countries in Europe. We are releasing uh, eight new countries within the end of uh, the year 2022, going to Brazil, going to Australia, India, Indonesia, Turkey, uh, all those uh, important uh, uh, countries, of course. Uh, it's going really fast. We know that we have uh, methods, processes that works really um, well, I would say, to, uh, to, 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 to engage and activate all the uh, collaborators in the uh, a lot of different organizations, companies, private organizations, public administrations too. So I think we are on a, on a good way to, to also uh, uh, continue our journey and, uh, and make the, the world better because uh, uh, the baseline of good habits is today is a good day to upgrade yourself. I think uh, it would be a pleasure to, to, to answer all your questions, of course. Thank you so much. We do have time for some questions. Uh, yes, good afternoon. I w just wanted to know if, uh, in addition to your catalog, you can upload the catalog of your clients. Um, if you can upload the catalog of your clients, 
Uh, what, do, what do you mean? Integrating in an LMS yeah. or something like this? Yeah, no, yeah, of course. In your LMS, yes. Uh, if we are, have already some courses, so for example, mandatory uh, courses. That, no, I don't think it will be possible, unfortunately. No, no, we, we, uh, we create everything uh, homemade in our studio in Eindhoven. Good Habits is a Dutch company that is located, the headquarters is located in Eindhoven. So we create all our courses in Eindhoven, in our studio. Uh, the difficulty, I would say, uh, is to, uh, to detect when, uh, when we launch, when we release, uh, when we have a new office in Brazil, for example, we will, not, we will propose, of course, the, port the, the, the Portuguese catalog and all the 14 languages that are available to the Brazilian people, but we will adapt and localize all the content that we create in our studio, working with uh, trainers, uh, pedagogical uh, engineers, I would say, uh, specialists, experts in that, are, that, that are from the country we are located in. So it's really important for us not to only translate the content. We have 150 courses in Dutch, we have 108 courses in French that are the same, but in another language. And I would say that the biggest challenge that we have is to flatten all the content and propose not only 150, but 200 courses in every language that we will have in our catalog. Today, 14 languages. At the end of 2022, it will be 21 or 22 languages. And it's like on Netflix. If you propose always the same content, at the moment, you will not connect anymore. You will not activate your account uh, on Netflix. So the biggest challenge for us is to propose always new content. We are able to propose two to three new courses in each language every month. So I think it's a lot, of course, uh, 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 of work, but we prefer uh, to uh, integrate everything and to do it internally in, uh, in Eindhoven. OK, other questions? Yes, I have a question for David. Have you been surprised by the choice of your learner for the content? Yes. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, have you been surprised by the choice of your learner? The when choice of... Uh, yes, because they were free to choose the content of the f training. So I was wondering if you have been surprised by the choice of some profile yeah, okay, and okay. in terms yes. of the, um, the most popular uh, learning um, courses, I, I was not su I'm not surprised to see time management up the top because in terms of needs, um, that's one of the ones that always comes up, you know, and people always are requesting that. I'm surprised to see Speak Business English up on the top of the list, though, because... Uh, we're business English, nobody needs business English in our organization. And secondly, most people's level is already very good. And thirdly, we have an extensive language program. But in, in hindsight, um, it, it does make sense. If you want to brush up on, on your language skills, but you, you don't necessarily want to have to go attend language courses every week, which is what we've been offering uh, for language uh, learning, this is a great solution for somebody who just needs something quick to brush up. And it's the same with Excel. We, we have internal trainers who train on Excel. But maybe, maybe you don't need to go to a, like a half day or a full day course on Excel. Maybe you just need to brush up on a few things and, and good habits can help you do that. So in hindsight, no. When I first looked at it, I was a little bit surprised. But in hindsight, no, it makes sense. Yeah. Hi, thank you for the presentation. I thought it was actually really interesting, uh, the initiative you mentioned of training coaches and facilitators and internal trainers. And I was wondering if you made any link in utilizing these people to connect to trainer, to be a trainer for uh, an additional resource for Good Habits content. So did you make any links between those two initiatives? Great question. Um, we, uh, the links we're making is, um, I can't find the slide now, never mind. Um, we, we haven't used the, the facilitators or the, the internal trainers, but we're going to be using the coaches. And um, one of the things we're doing is integrating into the training paths. And we're also integrating coaching into the training paths. So it's all going to be part of the same package. Um, the good, good habits, we, 
we've identified a group of ambassadors. This is also what, um, what Good Habits have recommended as well uh, to, to help kind of spread the word and help get people engaged. Those ambassadors are not actually our, our internal trainers, funnily enough. Um, it's our HR correspondents who work out in the field or work out in the different services. And so they're the ones who, who we've used to kind of uh, to push it. But not, it's a good point. We could also use the trainers as well. So thank you. Okay, time for another question if we have more. All right, okay. Well, great. Well, that was terrific and sounds like it's been very successful and a lot of good questions here. So thanks once again uh, to Ian and Damien.